want to look her in the eye. I want to look her in the eyes and yeah. I won't turn away. It won't be me to turn away. That was Kay Woodcock, the grandmother of murder victim J.J. Vallow, here on News Nation with Ashley Banfield, describing what she hopes to get out of being there in the courtroom, testifying in the murder trial of her one-time daughter-in-law and J.J.'s mother, Lori Vallow. It's a trial that will be filled with some deeply disturbing evidence and testimony about murders and multiple unexplained deaths, bizarre beliefs back with Dante Mills and Jesse Weber. Now, Jesse, how important is the grandmother going to be here? I mean, re remembering that I guess she's not Lori's mother, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So it's important to remember she and her husband basically raised J.J. for a period of time. They've been involved in this case before Lori was even arrested. They're a central component of this. Now, there was a back and forth about whether or not they would even be allowed in that courtroom, and it was ultimately determined that she, under Idaho law, is a victim. She will be allowed to be there. As far as Larry... And just to pause there, right. because typically witnesses yes. aren't allowed to sit in the courtroom, but there's an exception, right? There is an yeah. exception if they're a victim, and Larry will be able to be in the courtroom after he testifies and his testimony is done because you don't want a witness in there seeing the other testimony. It might color what they actually are. Is she going to testify or just, just I, him? Right now, my understanding is both of them are okay. going to testify. Yeah. Um, I know at least him. And again, they're a central figure in all, they're, they're central in all of this because they know Lori, they know the children. And I feel terrible because they have been the vocal points throughout all of this about what has happened to JJ yeah, and Tyler. She reported the missing. Yep. Um, when the mother obviously did not, she was in Hawaii living uh, her best life yep. um, without her children. But it is important to talk about the fact that she will be allowed to sit into the, in the courtroom. And it's important for everybody to understand, generally, you do not want witnesses to be in the courtroom when someone else testifies because there can be a blending of what they remember and what they hear. And you want fresh testimony. But if you are a victim, if you're deemed a victim, you can sit in because you're a part of the bigger case. And, and now she's been deemed a victim, so she will be able to. Now, before I talk about uh, this Wheel of Fortune episode where, yeah. where Lori Vallow was actually on Wheel of Fortune and talked about her family, including the dead child, uh, the subject of this case, which is bizarre, I want to talk about them having moved the case. Um, Jess, do you think this is a big deal? I think not only is this a big deal, it was the right decision based on what we're hearing from jury selection. So this moved from Rexburg, Idaho, which is where everything happened, to Ada County. Now, why is that important? Because it seems based on jury selection alone, a majority of the jurors didn't even know about this case. They, some of them were familiar, but it would have been, I believe, very different if it was from Rexburg. And sure, there are some who've heard about it. They were excused. Yeah. They couldn't have been impartial. But for the majority of the people you hear... They don't know. And I think that's important and, and why it was moved. And, you know, it's interesting because people always say in high-profile cases, well, you know, there ought to be a change of venue, change of venue. And in a lot of these high-profile cases, it wouldn't really matter to move somewhere else in the state, right? Because it's been covered statewide. But it sounds like in this case, that really wasn't necessarily the case. Well, now the world is kind of smaller. You have national news and you hear more. Yeah. Before, you'd only heard what happened in your county. Yeah. So you moved to another county and nobody knew. But for this particular case, there's another component to it. This is a very religious-based case. And in East Idaho, the Mormon faith is very, very strong. The church is united. Everybody in the church kind of knew the players were involved in this. In fact, some of the lawyers in this case are Mormon. But if you move where they are now, it's not so heavy. It's a mixed religious kind of area. So you don't have the, the sense of this Mormon belief. That's not really going to play a role in it where a juror may say, I want to protect our faith. So well, I'm going to hold who, these people who, accountable. Who asked for the move? Well, remember, it was the defense, the defense. who initially right. wanted it, and in the end, it was the best decision possible. I actually right. think it's beneficial for the prosecution. Well, I was just going to say, know? because the reasons you're talking about, it makes me think that... A maybe juror can say, I want to I want to protect our right. Mormon faith, right. and I want to I want to uh, hold these people responsible and let them know this is not our, what our religion is about. Because right. she did call them demons. She was an extremist. That may make a juror say... I'm going to hold them responsible just to make sure that uh, outsiders yeah, know it. this it. isn't who we okay, are. Got it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.